A reminder that all the code used in this video is available in the GitHub in the description below. Hey everyone, this is Brad from DevOps Journey, and this video will be a continuation on our Vagrant course. Uh, if you haven't already seen the previous video of getting started with Vagrant, please go ahead and check that out first. Otherwise, please come join me in Visual Studio Code and let's get started. So we have the code loaded up in uh, Visual Studio Code, and uh, we have three main configurations for this virtual machine. We have the config.vm.box, which gives the image name. We have the host name, and then we have the IP address. So this is a very basic configuration. So let's go ahead and add a few more options and get more customizations on this machine. So the next thing we want to do is just add a few more options here. Another thing we could do is we could do a synced folder, which is very similar to how we shared files within the Vagrant directory. But if you had a file located somewhere else within your file system, you can specify those locations and those folders. So we're going to do a synced folder. And uh, I have something called data. And we're going to sync that to the home slash vagrant data. So it will copy this directory over to this destination directory on the vagrant host. And it will act the same way as uh, our other shared folder that we had created in the last video. So the next thing you may want to do is to copy over an individual file. Um, I have a file right here within my directory here and it's called just copied file and uh, I want to push this over to a specific location within the virtual machine so what I can do is just go config.vm.provision and the provisioning type will be file and then I need to specify a source as well as a destination. So the source is going to be just copied file. And it's actually copied file.txt. And the destination will be home slash vagrant. And let's call it copied file. So that's good. That'll copy. And then we'll have a synced folder called data. And the last thing that we would want to do is uh, let's do some additional customization on this box and set the CPU, the amount of uh, CPU cores it has, as well as the memory available to it. So if I do uh, config.vm.provider, I want to choose the provider virtual box and this is actually going to be a loop so I have to put an end statement there and within this loop I'm referencing this variable so VB for virtual box customize and then uh, I have a command here so we're custom, we're modifying the VM and the mem memory parameter. So we're setting it to uh, one gig of memory. And if we just take this, copy it and paste it down here, uh, let's change this parameter to CPUs and let's set two CPUs for this one. So that's saved. Now let's pull up our terminal. So we got our terminal pulled up and we can see the vagrant file is there as well as the copied file. So one thing we can do is uh, we can actually type vagrant validate and it's going to validate our configuration file. Um, let's spell that correctly.
and we can see there's a problem with our vagrant file here so it failed to initialize there's a problem line 8 doesn't understand something on line 8 so if I pull up my vagrant file line 8 I can see that I made a typo here so it should be config dot vm dot provider so that's changed now let's do another vagrant validate and I can see that it validated successfully now so now I can do a vagrant up uh, to bring up the virtual machine and since the file uh, validated successfully it should work so I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video while this provisions alright so that is complete um, next thing we want to do is we can do a vagrant status and this should show us that everything is up and running and you can see the virtual box is running now so if I go vagrant SSH I can hop on to that machine and uh, let's check to make sure that those files created the way that we expected them to so if I do an ls I can see the data directory and that copied file so if I look at the copied file I can see uh, the text that was in there and if I hop on over to the data directory I can see that there is a synced file which is expect exactly what I was expecting since that matches up with my uh, directory structure here my data file is this synced file and any changes I make on the host machine on the synced file will be synced close that out and you can see that the changes were synced the copied file uh, any changes you make will not be synced uh, since it's a since the file is copied so this is very good if you have uh, static files that, that you don't want to change maybe like a shell script or something like that so we've uh, checked our our synced file and uh, our provision file so the next thing we want to check is to make sure that the settings the customizations that we made to the memory and the CPU cores exist so probably the easiest way to verify that is just to hop into VirtualBox and if we go into the VM that was just provisioned and we go into settings I can look under I think it's yeah system and if you go to processors you can see that there's two CPUs there and if you go to motherboard you can see that one gig of RAM was provisioned so that's exactly what we wanted and uh, that's just how you can verify that it was done properly so that's all I have for you guys in this video but please join me in the next one where I'll be going uh, more in depth with uh, the vagrant status commands and how you can uh, destroy vagrant machines and reload them uh, if you enjoyed this video please like it and if you'd like to learn more please subscribe thanks and see you in the next video